So we go back to this particular particles system example. And in the previous exercise, we successfully create a number of those circular dots form as a particle system, and they emit from the center of a sphere into the outer space. And what we are going to do today is to annex some of the forces within the particle system, other than the default one we have just set in the forces tab over here is the turbulence which create the random randomization of the forces. So what we are going to do is to create some sort of directional force and we try to make use of those force to drive the the our direction and the also the way the particle will move in the space. And to work with those force we introduce uh, new objects come from the SOP surface operator similar to auto 3D modeling. And what we are going to do is select something we call a metal ball. So metal ball is some virtual 3D objects. Virtual in a sense that it's not a real object. So it's usually we try to make use of the metal ball to create some sort of regions in the three-dimensional space. So in this case, we'll try to create a region which include all the particles within the system. And of all particles within that particular region, they will be affected by the force we are going to introduce. So the next one will be the force. So we first define the region over here and then we connect the region to the force and the force within this particular region defined by the sphere the circular area over here will affect the behavior of these particles within these regions so in this case if we examining the property of the metal balls we can find the default radius is actually quite small this is one unit. And for all those particles, they come from the center and travel to the outer space. And they will eventually pass this parameter 1 over here. And they will go into 2, 3, 4, 5, and into infinity, in a sense. So in this case, we need to enlarge the region of this metal ball such that within that larger region we can create a force over there. So in that case we can for example increase the size of this metal ball in the all three dimension. So once we increase the size so you can see it's occupied the whole viewport over here. And for the force we have a number of options. So what we are going to play around is the directional force at this point. So the default one, the force will go to the exact direction so that it's coming out of the screen. And we can specify some form of force, the axial one which is along that direction. And the vortex one is trying to attract the particle along this axis of direction. And also the spiral one will create a spiral effect along the direction. You can also, for example, modify a little bit of the direction such that it is not just pointing perpendicular to the screen over here. It will move, for example, a little bit towards the right hand side of your screen. And you can try by increasing the number over here. So we do not increase a lot and then we try to make a, some change on the slider to have a look of the effect. So once you are done with this, you can connect the force back to the particle system in the last input over here. So this one is the force. And you can also in the particle system, you make a reset and then try to have a look again and it give you 
more information about the force you have been working on and you can try to for example make some change in order to create a more effective use of the of the force So once you go outside back to your project, you can have a look of the effect. So that means you can see some change into appearance of those movement of the particle to this kind of rotating towards the center and then coming out in the Z and X direction in this lines over here. And in order to create more visual impact, you can also consider to change the color of the point sprite over here. So by default, it is yellow. And we have made some change over here. And you can think of what we have done in those last exercise. We can actually use, for example, some of the information to change the number right here. And what we are going to do is use the channel operator we have learned in the previous exercise to create changes in those number. So what I'm going to do is to have a look, for example, what we have done in the bit. So we have the gradual change from 0 to 1 over here. And then we also make use of the ramp. So those are the area we can specify the change in the color. So we do a horizontal one. And in the, for example, the left hand side, we select one color. And also on the right hand side, we select more or less the same color. And in the middle, you can, for example, change it to some other color. So essentially, you can have a gradual change of those color from the very beginning, yellow, blue, and then back to yellow again. And next step is we can try to compress this one into one single horizontal line. So the dimension is 256 and then 1 over here is the this particular line over here and the next step is because this is a top we need to convert it into a channel operator so we select the channel operator select the new object called top tool and then we drag this one to this top parameter it will give you a number of line over here you can have a look is actually the change of the RGB color according to the information in this line. So in this case, we just make use of the RGB and remove the alpha. And the next step is we go back to the chop and make another object called the lookup. So this lookup is a kind of lookup table. You input this one as a table and you input the bit as an index. So if you give you this piece of information, this is change of RGB simultaneously in some funny way. And what we are going to do is to make use of the RGB to modify the color over here by using the export chop we have done in the past. And it will give you the change in the color of your particle right here. So this is the color effect we have achieved by using the lookup table and also the force in the particle system.